when I, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, about New York, and um, and and there's this article. It's in the New York Post about why New York is dead. And you know this whole. Uh, there's a whole article. It's it's uh, the article's name is New York City is dead forever. It's written by James Altucher, who I guess is a is a stand up comic and a businessman and owner of a comedy club in New York. Uh, and uh, and it's really well written and it's really interesting. Um, and part of the argument is part of the argument against the New York is that first let me say something about New York. I mean New York is the greatest city ever. It's just, it's just this, I've never lived there, but I've always wanted to, although I think it's too late. It, what a great city it is. Um, you know, it's a, it's a business, it's a, it's a, it's a city of business. It's a city of banking. It's a city of production. It's a city where everybody's on the move constantly, where everybody is going somewhere. At least this used to be New York City. New York City is a city of skyscrapers. Skyscrapers is representing production, representing work, representing achievement, representing the making and creating of values. New York City is the city of finance. It's the city of Wall Street. It is the city that has been at the heart of American capitalism, at the core of American capitalism. For as long as American capitalism has been around. And I know we don't have capitalism today. But whatever element of free markets we have today has been guided by New York, by its allocation of capital, by its stock market, by its banks, by its institutions. New York is a dynamic, exciting business world in which startups and venture capitalists thrive. At least used to. If you want to raise money for anything, before the financial crisis release, before 2008, you didn't go to Washington, D.C. Nobody in America went to Washington, D.C. if they were interested in a new venture. We're going to raise money. We're going to start something exciting and new and big. They went to New York City or Silicon Valley. But New York City, if you were going to go public, you went to New York City. Any big venture in America, including the big ventures of Silicon Valley, ultimately went through New York City. But it's not just that it's a finance capital and a business capital and an entrepreneurial capital. It is the cultural mecca of this country. Whether it is whether you love jazz or whether you love comedy or whether you love theater, or whether you love museums, or whether you love opera, or whether you love classical music. New York is where it was. New York was the center of the American culture, the center of the American world. And if you love food, as I do, and you love restaurants, and you love variety of food. <laughs> Nowhere on planet Earth was there more variety. Everything from the best five-star restaurants to street food to every ethnic food to just a plethora of choices. If you love shopping, you love Fifth Avenue. If you love, if you love Christmas, Fifth Avenue and Christmas time was a celebration. New York was a once in all of human history kind of city. It had a grandeur, a passion, an excitement, an energy. There was all about capitalism, even 
long after capitalism had died or the remnants of capitalism had died. It was about success and is about success. And in five months, in 2020, the governor and the mayor of New York killed New York. They killed New York. Now, you can throw in the president of the United States into the mix as well. By failing, by failing dramatically to control the virus, to control the coronavirus. By panicking and shutting everything down. By giving the most panicked, most conservative, most risk-averse advice possible, not advice, using the power of the state to enforce it. Unbelievable. Somebody says, are you still blaming Trump for this? Of course. All of this, it Trump's fault. It could have all been stopped in February, March. We didn't have to get to this point. Never had to get to this point. Never had to be where we are today. The, 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 the level of, of, of uh, deficient leadership is unbelievable. I've, I've explained it a million times already. You're going to have to go back to one of my COVID shows to, to discover had, uh, how, Trump, uh, how Trump blew this. Of course, Trump had everything to do. Trump, was, Trump, among other things, was riling against de Blasio for not shutting down New York City early enough. So you can't, I mean, you guys, you don't actually listen to Trump. You have an imaginary Trump in your head and you follow what the imaginary Trump says and you, you pretend uh, that there's consistency there, but he changes his mind every month and, and there was a period in March where he was riling against de Blasio for not shutting down the city. But that's not the issue. The issue was that if the coronavirus had been dealt with in February, then it would have never needed. They would have never got to the point of shutting down the city. But anyway, I, I don't want to get this into a rant about, uh, about, uh, about Trump as much as I enjoy those. But I've, I've said this so many times. If you're interested, I don't think many of you are. I think you just argue for the sake of arguing. You're not interested in my point of view. If you're interested in my point of view, my, my views on Trump are well documented. My views on Trump versus COVID are well documented. My views on Trump versus COVID versus shutting down New York are well documented. You can go back and listen to my shows. Yeah, I don't actually say anything. No, it's you don't actually listen because I've been saying it in great detail, but here you are listening to me. That's what I find fascinating. People come on, come on the chat to insult me, saying that, I say nothing and there's nothing of value that I say and it's all hot air, but here they are sitting and listening. Isn't that fascinating? Anyway, I'm going to ignore you uh, for now. New York City. Magnificent city. And yet our political class, our politicians from the federal government down, have destroyed it. By shutting it down, there is no culture in New York today. By closing the restaurants, 60% by some estimates of those restaurants are gone and be very difficult to replace. The number of people leaving New York is astronomical. Nobody knows exactly what the numbers are. Rents are dropping by 30 to 50%. Real estate prices in New York are going to drop. And prices elsewhere all around the country, in suburban neighborhoods, are rising. What maybe COVID did was accelerate another trend, which is we suddenly realized, we suddenly realized that we don't need to go into the office. We can actually work at home. That Zoom is incredibly efficient. And that bandwidth, because it's so much higher today, can actually facilitate pretty good meetings. Pretty good interaction. And that maybe we don't need to go into crowded elevators to work on the 50th floor 
with dozens of other people. What for? So as a cultural mecca, where are all these artists who haven't been at work for five months and probably will not be at work until middle of 2021? Where are they? They're gone. Where are all the people who worked in the restaurants? Where are the people who own the restaurants, who've shut them down and closed them? They can't afford to live in New York anymore. They're gone. Restaurants will improve across America from the refugees from New York. But the restaurants in New York are gone. I know many of the banks in New York, the big banks, the ones that occupy whole skyscrapers, they're not going to open anytime soon. And if they do open, they'll open with very few staff. I mean, many of them are open now, but they have about 10% of the people who used to work there working now. So, New York is a shell of what it used to be. Comedy clubs? When is a comedy club going to open up again? When is a concert going to open up again? When is the next time? When is the next time? We are going to have concerts and, 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 and Broadway. Where's Broadway? Broadway's gone. New York seems like it's dying. And crime in New York used to be higher than it is today. That is true. But there was always hope because the fundamentals in New York were always there. It was always vibrant and exciting and opportunities. And, and there was always stuff, reason to come back. So even when crime was double what it is today in the 1970s and 80s, People kept coming back because of the value that it represented. But they've stopped. But they won't. Why? Even though crime is lower. Because all of those values are gone. The business value is dissipated. I think business will come back, but most of it will have gone. Thank you, CKJ. I appreciate the support, particularly given the abuse I'm getting on Super Chat right now. The culture is not there. And because of the riots, because of the demonstrations, crime is on the rise. Homelessness is on the rise. The whole idea of defunding the police, what has that done? That has increased crime, is increased homelessness. I mean, the homelessness right now in New York City is horrific, disgusting, awful. Their behavior, their aggressiveness, it reminds you of San Francisco. But de Blasio and de Blasio won't do anything about it. The police are being defunded. The police have been neutered. So they're not going to do anything about it. So you've got anarchy in the streets of New York. Now, where it's not empty, you've got chaos. You've got a horrible lifestyle. People have left. People are living in Florida and Atlanta and all over the country, Nashville. Will they ever come back? Not if New York doesn't get its act together, but is there any hope for New York to get its act together? I don't see it. I don't see where from, who could do it. So the state of New York is, is super sad, even though, again, crime rates are not as high as they used to be. It's only going to get worse now because the police is dysfunctional. It's only going to get worse now because there is a Marxist mayor who is unbelievably incompetent and has basically favored the looters and the demonstrators over productive individuals. It's not going to get better because companies have figured out they don't have to be in New York and they don't have to have people working in the office. 
It's not going to get better because restaurants that closed are never coming back. It's not going to get better because the cultural institutions, who knows if they open and when they do open, who's going to perform there? Who's going to be there? So what we're witnessing, maybe, I hope I'm wrong. I hope this article is wrong. What we're witnessing, maybe, uh, is the first big, major sign of the West's collapse. And that is the collapse of New York City. And it's not just the bankruptcy of the 1970s. This is much deeper and much worse. Because even though New York was bankrupt, Everybody wanted to go to New York. Everybody loved New York. Everybody thought New York was cool. And there was no option. There was no alternative to New York. Today, the internet is the alternative to New York. What's the leading fruity city in the U.S. going to be now? Well, I mean, it's, it was New York and San Francisco. And, and both those as cities... I think San Francisco has, is more likely to survive than New York, but both are in trouble, in major, major, major trouble. Okay, let's see. We got some, let's see, we got some questions. Um, let's see if there's anything related. Do you think any cities will recover that are not in California, New York City, and Boston? What is the future financial capital of the U.S.? Will we create another? I don't know. I don't know what happens to finance. I think it gets diffused. I mean, the stock market's not going away. A lot of the banks will stay in New York, but it's going to be more diffused. You know, Charlotte is a big financial center. I think, I think Dallas will become more of a financial center, Atlanta, uh, and, of course, San Francisco and Los Angeles. But um, cities are not going to recover. Cities are taking a real blow, and I don't know if they can recover. I, you know, it's hard to make these kind of predictions, and it's dangerous to make these kind of predictions. But it's going to take a while for the big cities. Given the shutdown, given the riots, and given the continued shutdown, it's still true that in New York is mostly, mostly shut down. It's going to be very difficult to, for cities like San Francisco, New York, uh, Chicago, to, to, to recover from this. D.C. will do great. D.C. always does great because there's plenty of money in D.C. They're printing. They just printed $3.7 trillion dollars in D.C. And all the people who touch that money all living in D.C. D.C. is thriving. There's construction everywhere. It's a booming place. Booming, booming place. Um, but I think, I think cities that are, I think Florida will continue to thrive because Florida is basically um, uh, the least regulated, the least regulated uh, place uh, in the, the least regulated state in the union. It's got no state income tax. It is generally friendly. Right? It is generally friendly to business and generally friendly to people to live. So I think Florida does well. Um, and and it, it's hard to tell. You know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell also what the backlash will be and what the fix will be. Texas, Florida, Tennessee, places like that are going to do well. Nashville is beautiful. Florida is amazing. Texas is amazing. All those places are good. Low taxes, relatively low regulatory load. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, 
the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.